welcome back. So we've broken down rocks into sediment. Now we're taking that sediment and we got to pile it up somewhere. We got to deposit it somewhere. So let's talk about sediment deposition. So we need to take this material that's been broken down and transport it. That process is called erosion. A reminder: it's uh, can uh, so sediment can be transported by by wind, by water, by ice, and by just plain old gravity. And then we're taking the sediment and piling it up somewhere. And the sediment settles and, and deposits when the speed decreases. When the wind dies down, wherever the water slows down, wherever the ice stops, and wherever the gravity stops it. Wherever the earth stops gravity from pulling things down. Now, there's two main um, areas in which um, sediment can be deposited. Kind of on land, excuse me, or near or in the ocean. So we'll, we'll treat both of these separately. So we'll talk about land as a depositional environment first. So on land, there's four main locations. At the margins of glaciers, the sides and the end, in and around lakes, in and around streams, and then uh, something called an aeolian environment, wherever wind blows strongly and intermittently every once in a while. So glaciers, as they grind and move through a valley, they grind down and break down the rock. So they kind of push sediment. <coughs> to me, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. They push sediment down to the edge of it, and they also leave sediment on the side. Again, as these as glaciers flow and move, and we'll we'll talk about glaciers at the end of the semester. <coughs> but we can see these piles of sediment on the sides or ends ends of glaciers. These are known as moraines. But it's almost like a bulldozer just pushing this material down or depositing it on the sides. Lakes. So as streams enter lakes, the stream water slows down and that sediment gets deposited. You can see the kind of tannish sediment starting to deposit. Streams usually get a little bit bigger pieces of, of sediment. So along the edges of the streams where you know the water slows down, you'll get deposits of sediment. And eolian environments Windy environments can pile up uh, sediment as well, often in sand dune type formations. There are some um, depositional land features that are indicative of areas that where sediment is being deposited, and some of those features are called deltas, alluvial fans, or playa lakes. That's not an environment, they're just land features. For instance, a delta is when a stream is entering into a, a, a large body of lot, a water a pond or lake or something like that and deposits the, uh, the, the sediment and forms this fan-shaped deposit. So you get fast-moving stream, hits the slow lake or pond, and that material will kind of uh, deposit up forming this fan. It's called a, a delta. An alluvial fan, very similar in shape to a delta, but in this case, so it's also fan-shaped, it's when a moving stream doesn't flow into water, but when a moving stream flows into flat dry land, like a valley floor or a playa. More on that later. Um, so no longer constrained to these valley walls, the stream can go any which way, depositing that sediment, forming that fan shape. And these are very common in deserts. In Arizona, we get a lot of these as well. Alluvial fans at the base of mountains. So this is a Death Valley, and you can see as these stream channels uh, exit from the, these little valleys off the mountains and onto this flat valley floor, it forms these alluvial fans, very fan-shaped, <coughs> rounded structures. And this one's just absolutely <coughs> massive. So the environment would be stream. But the feature, the shape is called, the, the, the feature itself is called an alluvial fan. From the ground, it kind of almost looks like a triangle. We need to look at it from the air to kind of see this rounded, rounded shape to it. But from the ground, again, it kind of looks like a, like a triangle. But that's uh, all that sediment over time just being deposited. And then a playa lake, uh, or just sometimes just referred to as a playa. Not playa, playa. Flat. Playa is a dry, seasonal lake bed that forms in arid regions. Parts of the year it may have standing water. Um, other parts of the year it, it'll be dry. So as water 
uh, kind of as it rains, as you can see in the surrounding mountains, uh, water might break down and bring some of that sediment material down to the valley floor. And so it might be covered in water, and then the water evaporates away, depositing the sediment to leave these very flat structures called playas. And so sometimes people race on playas. In fact, uh, there are a few playas where they where they go to set land speed records because they're just so flat. Um, you know, there's no hills or dips or anything, so you can get going really fast because the thing is just flat like glass for the most part. Uh, but it's a it's a feature. It's not an environment. One interesting playa is the racetrack playa in Death Valley National Park. What makes this playa so interesting? is that here, rocks move on their own. And as they move, they leave these trails in the flat playa. Um, yeah, they kind of just move on their own. Kind of interesting. So you can track how these rocks move. They just move on their own. Look it up, see how it works. So that's land as a depositional environment. And then we have the ocean area. So at or in the ocean. So near or in the ocean. And those four main locations include the shore itself, uh, a structure called estuaries, the shallow parts of the ocean, and then the deep parts of the ocean. So the depositional environment of the shore, kind of what we think about, there's a bunch of sand, that's sediment, that's a great depositional area. Wave action kind of pushes the sand uh, up onto the, the shore area, so this shore is a depositional environment. An estuary is a, is a very specific area where a freshwater stream uh, encounters a, kind of an incursion of salt water from the ocean, and it forms a very unique biologic uh, ecosystem called an estuary. In doing so, you kind of get sediment coming this way from the stream, you kind of get sediment getting pushed this way from the ocean, and it kind of intermingles and has a, a its own kind of unique depositional environment. And then you have deposition in the ocean itself, in the shallow parts of the ocean, along the continental shelf. This, and listen to me good, this is where most of the world's sedimentary rocks form initially as layers of sediment on continental shelves in the shallow parts of the ocean. Not the deep ocean, shallow parts of the ocean. So a good bet if you're looking at a sedimentary rock, not always, but if you're looking at a sedimentary rock, chances are it formed from sediment that was deposited in the shallow parts of the ocean along the continental shelf, compression, cementation, squishing that material together, eventually turning it into sedimentary rock. When you're at the Grand Canyon and you're looking at layers of uh, types of rocks called like sandstone, shale, limestone, all of those typically, sometimes not, but typically form in these shallow parts of the ocean. So all those layers of the Grand Canyon got there as successive oceans came into and left Arizona. And over time, sediment is deposited when the ocean was there. And then when the ocean went away, uh, you know, the, the material began to lithify. And then the ocean came back in, sediment was deposited, left stuff lithified. So the shallow parts of the ocean, again, for the most part, if you can start to identify rocks and like, oh, it's a sedimentary rock. Oh, it probably formed in the shallow parts of the ocean. That's probably a good guess. Maybe seven out of 10, eight times out of 10, you'd probably be right. Sometimes, again, not always, because you have all these other depositional environments. Quite often, this is a place where a lot of sediment collects. Therefore, over time, when you turn the sediment into sedimentary rocks, which we'll talk about in another section or so, this is where it occurs. And you do get some sediment deposited in the deep ocean, uh, but much less than you would at the shallow parts of the ocean. Before we go on, let me give you part of the super secret code. It is the number three. One more time, the number three. All right, so those are depositional environments. All right, so we took an existing rock, we broke it down, weathering, we created sediment, we transported and deposited that material in a specific environment. There's four kind of environments on land, four on or near the ocean. Now we're gonna take those deposited sediments and turn them into sedimentary rocks. This is where I stop. And I'll see you back here in just a second for section four on sedimentary rocks.